Just the incarnate, this mini series we're doing is five issues, but it is the second act of the Infinite Frontier saga that we're building. It's a trilogy. They started with Infinite Frontier Zero, following Death Metal. So we had the Infinite Frontier mini. Then we have the Justice League Incarnate is sort of the second act, but it also kind of spreads out across the DCU and you can see there are like little things happening in the DCU that all kind of connect and tie together. By the time we get to the third act in 2022, you'll see how it all really just comes together. With the team book, it's hard to say just like one character that I couldn't wait to write. But the thing that I love writing Infinite Frontier that I got to carry over here was the back and forth between Flashpoint Batman and President Superman. That was a super organic thing that happened in the book that was not a planned thing. That like, wasn't something we had originally like mapped out in the outlines of like, oh, we're gonna write them together and we're gonna make this like multiverse finest. That was not the plan. It came organically while we were writing the book. And also Captain Carrot is a lot of fun to write. The dynamic with the Justice League Incarnate team, for the most part, they get along at the beginning. Like the idea is that like, you know, they've gone through all this stuff together. They've been a team for a while. They recognize they're all from different worlds, but they all have the same goals. However, in the first issue, we get three new team members. We get Avery Ho, who gets to be the, like I said before, is the point of view character and is sort of able to give a different perspective on some of these adventures, but she's like the young rookie. Then we get Dr. Multiverse, who's a new character from Earth 8, and she doesn't get along with some members, but definitely gets along with others more and kind of creates a, a conflict among the team. And then we get a third new member that we haven't revealed yet, and that third new member 100% creates a lot of tension. Thomas Wayne from, from Flashpoint is such a different character from Bruce. They have such different voices. Like Batman is obviously angry, but there's a kind of obsession and there's a kind of, you know, quest for justice with him where I always felt like Thomas was searching for a kind of peace. Whereas, and I think Thomas is like a blunt instrument, which is interesting because he's a doctor, right? He's a person that used to be a surgeon and used to be about precision. And then that kind of got taken away from him. Like when his, you know, when Martha and Bruce died in the Flashpoint world, it completely changed him. It just made him this much more angry person. But so the plan is for every world that they go to throughout the series, each world is drawn by a different artist. So in issue one, they go to Earth 8, and on that world, we meet the Retaliators, and that world is drawn by Brandon Peterson. And we felt like he was perfect for that world. And then you look at issue two, where they go to Earth 13, and Earth 13 is a horror world. And so we got Kyle Holtz, who is an amazing artist, one of my favorites. He just excels at horror. And so we really leaned into like, make this horror, make this creepy, you know, make it very gothic and wrote it for him. And so that's been the thing we do consistently for every artist. So with Darkseid, he's, you know, he's the dark god. He's the greatest evil of the DCU, or so he thought. You know, Darkseid is always obsessed with control. Like everything about Darkseid is always about how he can control everything, everyone, every situation, every decision. Like that's what the uh, anti-life equation is for him. So the idea that there's something out there that he can't control is frustrating and a little scary for him. Normally he's the kind of character that manipulates from behind the scenes and sends people out to do his bidding. But in this case, he realizes that he's the one that has to go and confront it himself. So that's the role that he plays. He plays a, a, an antagonist, but he's also realizing there's something really bigger out there. In Justice League Incarnate number one, the team goes to Earth 8 with the Retaliators and Darkseid follows them. And on that world, there is another cosmic god on Earth 8 that Darkseid gets into like a straight up fist fight with. And it's this really cool fight scene with a twist that I think when people get to it, they'll be really excited.